Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan, and today we have Michelle Martinez back with us. Thank you for having me back again. Yeah. It's great to be here. Thank you to AI News and thank you to Ethan for having me today. If you missed the last episode, please go go check it out. And uh, can you tell our viewer and your voters your which district you're representing? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. So my name is Michelle Martinez. And uh, well, my full name is Michelle del Rosario Martinez. And that's how I'm running. <laughs> and I'm running for State Assembly District 41. And that's in the LA County. And it includes the cities of La Crescenta, La Cañada, Pasadena, Altadena, Sierra Madre, Monrovia, Laverne, San Dimas, Upland, Claremont. And then it goes up to Lido Creek, Pinon Hills, and uh, Phelan. And it's a pretty big area. <laughs> it's a two hour drive from one point of my district to the other. Um, but I'm happy to serve um, in District 41. It's an amazing district with um, a diverse set of individuals, uh, every, everything you can think of. But it's a majority Democrat, 54% Democrat with a 22% uh, Republican base, but uh, we were the top vote getter in the primary elections. We got the top votes and we got almost 40% of the votes. So that's, that's pretty incredible. That's very, very good. Yeah. How do you feel like uh, this election is different from all the other elections that like 2022? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it. I think, I, I like to say this to people all the time. You know, the pendulum has to swing all the way to one end until it comes back. Yes. And I think we're there, you know. <laughs> I don't know how much more pain we can take or tolerate in California. But we have, you know, in in all seriousness, the legislation that's passed, um, how it's hurting our education system, the criminality in our state, uh, the parental rights that have been stripped away, um, the education system, the homelessness, all of it has just gotten to a point that it's just unbearable. It's unbearable. And so uh, there's only one way to go, and that's <laughs> up from here, right? It's almost like, you know, when you hit rock bottom, there's only one way to go, and that's up. And, and I think California is kind of that cautionary tale where um, – We've seen it all. There's nothing that can surprise us anymore in California. The mm. the world is seeing what's happening, you know, at our borders, how it's affecting everything. Um, and for those folks who say, oh, I'm not into politics. Yeah. Whether you want to be or not, you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because when you go to the gas station, when you drop your kids off at school, how much you pay at the grocery store, um, and what you're seeing on the streets, all of it affects us. And that's all called politics. You know, that's our government. Well, the leaders we choose, the laws that come into effect, uh, the district attorneys that we have, whether they're going to implement the full extent of the law or, you know, uh, try to defund our police, all of that matters. And, and it affects us in our day to day lives. The reason I want to ask because Michelle is a very, very, she had a she has a lot of experience with politics. <laughs> and before the show start, yeah. she was actually talking about the time that she met with yeah. Mr. Donald J. Trump. Yes. Uh, uh, can you tell us? Yeah. Our, our, our <laughs> great... Everyone's interested in yeah. Trump's life. <laughs> and every time we have a Trump yeah. video out, it, it, the view goes up. <laughs> oh, so please so tell us the yes. experience. It, you know, it, and this goes back to what we were talking about, our Christianity. Yes. I, I totally, I'm so sold out for God. You know, God is my savior. Trump is my president. <laughs> 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 um, but it, it, you know, I do I can say in all honesty, um, when it comes to the presidency and I was weighing all the presidents, I thought his, you know, President Trump's, uh, the way he communicated was a little rough around the edges and it was very uh, direct. And I thought, wow, you know, that that's going to be hard. And, and I thought, well, maybe that's not the best for us. And the reason I thought that was because we had already experienced all the happy holidays and, yeah. you know, being nice and the politically correct and yeah, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and so to see Trump, it was like such a shock, but as God would have it, it was exactly what we needed. And I'm going to be a little bit uh, rough around the edges right now when I say this, but I really feel, you know, when we talk about Christmas, 
we were saying happy holidays and President Trump came in and said, Merry F and Christmas and now what, right? You know, <laughs> like he was not afraid to just, he was all out for religious freedom. And I love that. I love that. That as Christians, we, we took a deep breath and went, wow, okay, we're back. You know, we, yes. we can say Merry Christmas. Yes. We can be proud of being Christians again. Um, and because we have the truth, right? And so... Um, I was very excited to work with his campaign, um, and I had the ability to do that through different um, or volunteer organizations and and um, the relationships I built with the Trump organization and some of the uh, advisors. And so, you know, I was traveling to Arizona, Nevada, California, um, supporting President Trump. And uh, but something interesting came out of that, and that this is where we were talking about like our positioning and. Uh, the influence that we have. Well, God's been doing that for me. And I was at a charitable event with my parents. We were um, at a Peruvian event for children of Peru. And I get a phone call. And it's this stranger I've never met before who's like, do you want to work the president's motorcade? And I was like, okay, stop everybody. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm going to go take this call. And they're asking me, would you like to volunteer? We're looking for six volunteers for the president's motorcade. He's coming to California uh, on Monday or whatever. And I was like, yes, of course. And Uh. so I had no idea who these people were that were calling me, right? But I'm like giving them my driver's license, my social security number, my date of birth, my address. Wow. (laughs) All over the phone. And I'm like, okay. Um, And I was just trusting, just trusting that it was all legitimate. And I go home and I tell my husband, I said, I don't know. I go, either somebody's gonna buy a house with all the information (laughs) I gave them or a car or this is legitimate. And sure enough, I got a phone call two days later. It was a legitimate uh, request. And uh, so they tell me, can you be in Santa Monica by a certain time? And I was like, yeah, I'll be there. And I remember I woke up super early. I got ready. And I didn't, I still, you know, I had that little doubt, that little doubt, like, is it real? You know, and I didn't want to be late. I was thinking, okay, my car breaks down or if I get a flat tire, I don't want to be like, oh, Mr. President, I'm late. I I left like so early. I got there two hours early. And I, and so I go into a private hangar in Santa Monica and, you know, there is a receptionist and there's a desk, but there's nobody around. Like, Uh I don't know if they had cleared it out. And I was like, is this for real or not? And so I go up to the lady and I'm like, excuse me, is this where we're meeting? And she couldn't tell me yes or no. She's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, okay. <laughs> thought, oh my God. It's a secret right? service, it's actually yeah, secret. It's the secret. <laughs> and so I just sat at the, t- at the couch. You know, they had a little couch for the VIPs. And I was like, I'm just sitting there and I'm all, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, what's going on? And uh, so finally, you know, there were like little offices. I see a man in a suit come out of one of the offices. How long have you waited? On, until I, I probably this is probably about an hour in now. You know, I've, okay. I've been to the restroom and back and kind of peeked around the halls, seeing if anybody's there, and I couldn't see anything. And else. the girl like, didn't say anything to you. No, she just let me sit there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so finally, this guy comes out. And I kind of was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, because he was wearing a suit and he had a little earpiece in his ear. And I thought, <laughs> oh, finally, this man's Secret Service. And I was waiting, you know, I'm just looking at him like, uh-huh, uh-huh. What, you know, are you going to come say something to me? And he just gives me a, <laughs> he keeps walking. You know, just with sunglasses just a, or no yeah, sunglasses? Yeah, sunglasses, okay. earpiece. <laughs> Uh, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm just going to trust it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so finally, you know, 10 o'clock rolls around or whatever time it was, and everybody's like coming in. And I'm, and uh, so some other folks uh, that I volunteered with before, I was like, oh, look at, you know, I'm like it's somebody I knew. So I was like, oh, okay, finally. <laughs> and so it was so funny because they gave us these little pins, you know, that we wear that identifies us as uh-huh. the volunteers. And, um, and so it's funny, I asked about it and... Uh, they're like, no, that's not what that means. And it was an A. And I thought, okay, it means like Avengers. You know, we were coming up with all the, like, awesome. No. <laughs> it was another bad word. <laughs> okay. Well, type it down right here. Tell yeah, me in go. secret. <laughs> and then I was like, why do you guys call us that, right? And he's like, because you guys are always the ones that crash the vans. And I was like, oh, okay. So you it should be like, like well, <laughs> maybe because we paid for it with our taxes. <laughs> But it was it was amazing because, you know, 
once you realize this is real, it becomes unimaginable right that and especially for myself i'm a first generation american my parents uh -huh. came from peru i'm just a regular girl from pasadena uh. who lived a regular life and uh i remember that moment you know i'm i'm in the van and i'll share this video so you guys can share the video because it's hilarious uh because they said you know you can video and take pictures and stuff but as soon as the doors open you've got to have both hands on the on the uh, steering wheel and you got to go. So it was so exciting because I got to watch all of it, right? But as soon as the helicopter doors open, uh. and so I'm videotaping everything. I'm like, there's Air Force One and it's <sighs> landing and there's the Marine opening the door. But then as soon as they open the door, I'm like, okay, bye. And I had to look at that. <laughs> so I, I don't have any pictures of President Trump, but that's because I had to be ready to drive. And I was like, oh man. So I got to see him, you know, exit and I got to drive his executive folks so i had like brad parscall in the car with me okay. who was um his campaign can you manager. talk to them yeah well i wasn't supposed to but they started talking to me and asked me oh who are you and i told them you know i'm michelle and at that time i was working with uh, the rnha which is the republican national hispanic assembly and they're like oh we know that organization so i was like okay and then the secret service guy gets in the passenger seat with me and he mm -hmm. says okay we're going to start moving and it's incredible because I didn't know this. There's the tank, you know, they call it the tank, the president's limousine. And it really is a tank. Like the doors are this thick. It's just incredible. And uh, and there's another tank that follows uh -huh. just in case, right? And he's got his bomb squad and his fire crew and his ambulance. And like, it's just like. It's a really car. serious yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. But what was crazy is I got to be like the first van because I had his executive team with me. And so we're driving on the 405. And anybody who's from California or Los Angeles, <laughs> you know the 405 is always a parking lot. Yes. So it was perfectly open, like not a car to be seen. And I'm driving on the 405 and, you know, the president's, you know, limo is in front of me and the flags are waving, you know, the presidential <laughs> flags. And like, and the tears coming down my eyes because <laughs> I like this moment, I'm like, I'm really doing this. I'm like really driving behind the president of the United States of America. And so this, the Secret Service guy, you know, leans over. He goes, this is really surreal, huh? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like mm -hmm. and he goes, now hurry up. <laughs> he goes, he's like, I'm like, okay. And I'm like running really fast. <laughs> They're trying to catch up. And the whole time I'm thinking, I'm such a bad driver. If they only knew that I'm such a bad driver. <laughs> But I did pretty good. I didn't crash that day or anything. But it was amazing, yeah. And to see how President Trump worked, that uh -huh. was amazing. That man, it's incredible how he works. You know, uh, he was in California. We picked him up early in the morning, uh -huh. right? And he went to his events, and we put the vans back like at 10 o'clock at night. He flew out to Nevada. I knew he was flying out to Nevada. So I actually got in the car, yeah. and I picked up my mom, and we went to Las Vegas because we knew that we had a VIP event the next day in Las Vegas yeah, yeah, with yeah. Don Jr. and, and um, Kimberly. And uh, so... We stayed at the Trump Tower. We were there. We were there bright and early for, for the event the next morning. And there was President Trump. You know, he came down, greeted the people. And I'm like, when does this man sleep? I'm like, because I was exhausted. I like, like, just two days of being with the president. I was completely exhausted. I'm like, how does he do it? You know, he's wow. just, and it's just incredible. His work ethic is really the incredible. energy that yeah. he brings to people and himself too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's my little small story, but he does it over and over and over every day. You know, he's just, he just keeps going. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. I think about yeah. our president right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, I, you wonder when he wakes up. <laughs> he, he's always sleeping. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's funny. Uh, I think that's a good story. It's yeah. a good story. If you have some it's memorabilia, a, you, yeah, uh, I've that, got that, pictures that'll be, that'll be else good. Is, yeah. yeah. And yeah. uh, so, and I got to do that twice. And so he came back. He Next was, time, can you tag, tag me along? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, you just have to give your firstborn. Yeah, you know. Uh -huh. no. Yeah, it was it was just incredible to to be able to. And you know what was so funny? This this was my takeaway. He had six volunteers, right? And two of them had come from like San Diego, that area. 
And they didn't want to come the next day. This is so California. They were like, oh, we already did it. You know, we have the experience. And I'm like, wait a minute. You're telling me you're not coming back for the president of the United States of America? Like, yeah. you've already had enough? Like, I'm like, what? So I'm like, it's so California, you know, to be like, oh, okay, I'm over it. You know, like, okay, I, I got my selfie. I got my, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm done. And I'm like, no, this is about serving the president of the United States. Like, I will always have that memory that in a very small way, I got to serve my president, you know, and, and I don't think that you can ever like have your fill of that. Right. Like I, I thought it was supposed to be like a, you know, one of those stunt driver in order to, <laughs> right. yeah. and it turned out just volunteer. I, <laughs> it's I, a volunteer. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't look up my driving record. <laughs> <laughs> you got a ticket in uh, 05. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's a amazing story. My parents came from Peru in 1960 for the American dream. Yes. And now their daughter, just one generation, right? Their daughter is literally driving behind the president of the United States of America. Yeah. That's awesome. Who, who, who said dream couldn't come true? <laughs> right. It, yeah. it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, a, in, in a way, Donald Trump not only changed America, it, it changed the whole Republican Party. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I agree. And now there's a lot of, I would say, dark forces going mm -hmm. against it, yeah. going going against him. Yeah. Why do you think that's happening? And you, you were a Republican your whole yeah. entire life. You, yeah. you never become a leftist. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. no, <not laughs> like I all. was in high school. But <laughs> yeah. but but you you were always conservative your yeah. whole entire life, and you always see the Republican Party. What did Donald Trump bring to the Republican Party? Yeah. And then uh, it changed the Republican Party. And it's kind of inducive of what we are conducive of what we see in our culture today, which is everybody kind of has their lane that they're in mm -hmm. and they don't want to be bothered. Right. Like this is what I do and I don't do anymore you handle it right like we want our leaders to take care of that we want the president to take care of that one of the reasons that president trump is so popular is because he's a take charge kind of person and people are looking for someone to give it to right like yeah. you take care of it and he's like okay i'll take care of it he's that kind of person and people like that are very successful because they're not waiting for anybody else they're not yes. looking for somebody else to fix it they're like I'm I'm the fixer. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think he 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 did very well at doing stuff like that. But from our perspective, we're waiting for someone to to come and save us, right? And so he has that kind of character uh where he can set things straight. Like he he's not afraid of having the hard conversations. Yeah. Shake hand with Kim Jong Un. Oh, who could do that? I know. Who could Amazing. do that? Amazing. Uh, Amazing. To tell me the second person. Yeah. That could do that. No. <laughs> and it, it's, it's um, I know he knows God. Mm -hmm. You know, w we can weigh and measure his level of Christianity, you know, but I know he's a guy who submits to God. Yes. And why do I say that? Because he asks for prayer, right? Mm -hmm. And he defends religious liberty he understands how important that is right he was the first president to walk in the march for life right yes so he honors <clears throat> that part of his life you know you can debate all day long whether he's a perfect man um yeah. none of us are right yeah. what, what is that saying we're not perfect we're just saved and um and god will use the least likely person that we can think of to execute his plan and that's who God is, right? And as long as, you know, he may be flawed, but he knows who God is and mm -hmm. he honors God, I'm okay with that. Like, um, and I just hope that that continues, right? Because it's, it's we were talking in the last episode about um, how people are wanting us to step away from the conversation of life yes. and, uh, you know, the LGBTQ community and just talk about policy. Yeah. But, um this is where politics comes into play. Are we going to be political or are we going to be good leaders? Because I, there's tons of politicians. I don't want to be a politician. Mm -hmm. I want to be a good leader. I want to be a person that sets a tone that's good for the people and ensures that all the government agencies around it, all the programs around it, 
adhere to that idea, right? Mm -hmm. To helping the people, not lining the pockets of, you know, NGOs and friends of, of legislators and the governor. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you touched up on, on something that's very important. A lot of Christians say like, oh, Donald Trump is not a cr true Christian. He's doing that for show mm -hmm. and doing this, doing that. But I got to tell you one thing. It's Donald Trump know his identity. Yes. He know what he's good at and he know what he's bad at and he knows how to get things done. Amen. When, when, when yeah. you have the abilities to do that, that's what makes you a leader. Yeah. When you know your identity under God and yeah. you do what you're supposed to do for God, Amen. that's when you become powerful. People like to talk about like, ah, oh, he got divorced so many times. If you know your identity, mm -hmm. I think once you know your identity in God, that will completely change you. Mm -hmm. We see the changes in Trump's life. We, we, we see Absolutely. him. He, he, he was, we all think he's like arrogant. You mm -hmm. saw his, all these old TV shows and then the Home Alone and he's like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But th th this guy know what he's capable of. And when you see him, the energy is completely different. I, I agree. I think <clears throat> that in business, he's always been a man of bravado uh -huh. um, because that works in business, right? Yes. And, and it served him well. He's been very successful as a businessman. Um, but then there's the heart, you know, yes. and it's when you're put up against those hard moments that the heart is revealed, right? Yes. In, in the light moments, we don't, we can all kind of pretend, but in those tough moments is where you see the heart of a person. And when we talk about who President Trump is, you know, he cared for our, our, our Christians, our religious freedoms, not just Christians, but all religious freedoms, right? And, and that is true of America. He cared for our freedom of speech, not just for the ones that agree with him, but for all of them, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where the, what America stands for is so different than anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. Because even if we don't like what we're hearing, we still know you have the right to say it right yeah and that's what's so incredible about this country that no matter where you, i mean we were just talking about it, no matter where you start right i'm yes. just a kid you can be working with the president <laughs> <laughs> you know maybe for a day or two but you know whatever it's it's still you know it's an incredible it's enough moment. you don't yeah, want to work with it every day <laughs> no. so much work no <laughs> but you know it's 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 that idea right and and i think that he He's just a great example of someone who, like you're saying, knows himself. He's completely transparent. Um, in those hard moments, he made the right choices. You know, every president was like, well, I'm not going to march in life, you know, in the life yeah. mar march. Or, but he did it. He was like, no, this is the right thing to do. Same thing. Um, when there was a chance of war, he got in there. He had the tough meetings. He had the tough conversations. Mm -hmm. And he made sure we didn't go to war. Yeah. Right? Unlike now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and why is that? Because they knew he was crazy enough to go to war. Yeah. And it wasn't going to be a war of, um, you know, just growing the militaries and making more money. It was going to be a war that stopped. Yeah. Stopped people in their tracks. Yeah. And so I, I think it was a, it's a big difference where we are today and... Uh, Hopefully, where we you know see ourselves at the end of this year, we'll we'll be back on track. What's the our, our plan to stop the establishment Republican? Because I th I see that as a very bad threat. Yeah. And uh, what what? Well, are you... here here's what I say. Uh, I've always had this philosophy in life, and I still do, that let people know you by your works, mm -hmm. right? So if I spend my time worried about the fractions of the party that are not correct, then that's what I will be known for, that I was, you know, mm -hmm. chasing, belittling people, talking bad about people. Um, God says revenge is mine, mm -hmm. right? So I know he'll take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. My job is that this party that I represent, the Republican Party, is a party to be proud of. The history of the Republican Party is something we can all be very proud of, right? Yeah. Um, Stop I mean, slavery. Right, exactly. Give women's right to vote. And yes. It, it, all, all kinds of stuff. And so 
we need to remember that. And as long as we continue to grow that, right, if we're focused on how we can help, right, like, we have an opportunity right now in our nation, um, especially with the homelessness, to turn a new leaf, right? Like, it's, it's not going to get fixed the way the Democrats wants to fix it, because we know it's not going to be growing the government. We know it's not going to be the NGOs. We know it's not going to be throwing more money at it. It's going to mean collaborating with those organizations, mm -hmm. those nonprofits that really know what they're doing, that are helping and saying, how do we come in alignment with them, right? Like just right now in Los Angeles, we have the Dream Center, which was an amazing, or I mean, they're an amazing organization that was, still are, an amazing church that fed millions, millions during COVID. Mm -hmm. And FEMA has denied them their, um, uh, any help because they weren't an officially registered organization to work with the government. Mm -hmm. And yet Adam Schiff was at, telling people to go and get help from the Dream Center. Other, you know, Gavin Newsom, everybody knows the Dream Center. And yet when the Dream Center files for FEMA, they won't give it to them. It, it really is a shame that we do have organizations how to know how to do it right, right? The Dream Center is an organization that takes people off the street. They put them through a program. Um, they get cleaned up. They, they learn how to be effective in their community. And they turn around and do it again. So, you know, some of those people come back into the program and help the next generation of people that need help. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what we need, organizations like this. And yet we're not helping them. Yeah, You know, these are the people that we've identified are being successful and getting it right. And yet we don't want to, we don't want to help them because yeah. of a technicality. Yeah. It's, it's just like, uh, the doctors don't want to heal you. They want to make you stay sick. Oh gosh. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> only the thief yeah. want to help you hope you're successful. Yeah. Yeah. So I think our government is like the biggest thief on, uh, like the, to help homeless problem and drug addict is to build a a safely uh, yeah. drug center. It just shows the level of disconnect mm -hmm. from from this um, from certain areas of our government, right? Like the level of disconnect from the Democrat Party mm -hmm. and some Democrat legislators is very apparent. Very apparent. Um, you know, when President Biden says, "Oh, I'm going to um, pardon." Student loans. Student loans. Who are some of the people that got it? Some of the richest people who can pay for their children's student yeah. loans have yeah. taken advantage of that, right? So there's no, they're, all they're worried about is how do I make myself look good, right? Like, I'm going to pay for your student loan. <laughs> you know? and, and they're not thinking about what that really means. But as a real leader, I got to ask myself, what are the implications of this? What does it really mean? Mm -hmm. Why not provide scholarships for those kids and, and, and give them motivation? You know what? If you keep your score be above a 3.5 and you finish in four years instead of five, yeah, we'll pay your tuition. Those are the kind of motivations that get, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. But to just eh, hand out, you know, <laughs> lottery yeah. cards to everybody. Especially our college these days yeah. is yeah. full of social Ooh. study and... yeah. You, you, you don't need to st st yeah. st study social study to understand society. Yeah. Every, every, I, I have a, a lot of friends who are social worker and mm. they, they told me personally, it's like, uh, I get paid, but we never fix anything. And can I tell you why a lot of your friends are social workers? Please. Because we are building a social government. Yeah, right a socialist we government. want <laughs> kids no, uh, in all honesty we want people that will just stamp the rubber stamp and grow the government right yeah and make us be more dependent on them and we and you know nothing against the folks who have gotten into this i know a lot of people you know work really hard to get their four-year degree and but when your sole responsibility is to grow the agency grow the program then we're not fixing things, we're breaking it. Um, it's the same thing when, you know, we're talking about um, medicine and what have you. Vaccines, when I took a vaccine as a child, right, from the from pre-born to 18, I had nine vaccines, nine vaccines. 
Wow. Kids from preborn to 18 now are getting 92 vaccines in the in that lifespan. Yeah, 92. And we're not making the connections between childhood diseases such as autism and um, all these different, you know. 92? Yeah, 92. Wow. The, the mothers are getting them while the baby is still um, in gestation, right? And till the age of 18, yeah. It's the, the list is ridiculous. Like sometimes they'll have scheduled, you know, 15, 16, 17 shots in, in one, one session. Wow. Protect your kids. Yeah. And, and we don't have a good reason as to why. Yeah. And yet, you know, there's <clears throat> so many uh, reputable doctors out there and reporting analysis that show us that. It doesn't really help. It doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is like COVID vaccine. You got it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so for me, I, I think that there's a lot that we're not, we're, as we were saying earlier, we just let somebody else handle it, right? We don't take the initiative. We're like, oh, well, the doctor says my kid's got to take all these shots. So, okay. Well, I want him to be in school. So just take the shots. Well, you know, we, we want to make sure he, you know, he gets to play soccer. Okay, here you go. And we're not thinking of the consequences, not realizing that the original premise that this country was built on, right, to do no harm, to serve and protect, it's kind of out the window mm -hmm. because we have leaders that don't care anymore, businesses that don't care anymore. Um, we have outside influences from China and, and other places that are really affecting the way we do business. Like everything is made in China, right? Well, yeah. what do we know about made in china yeah, it's and, not gonna last yeah, and we, <laughs> and we start to down. hate ourselves yeah. yeah. we try to be like country in europe we try to be like uh most socialist uh society we try to have all these uh government grant basically yeah. to uh, so we don't have to do anything right. we we become a lazy people we don't want to do uh, get our hands dirty. Yeah. Now you see, you, you talk to any high schooler, they want to be YouTuber. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, you, they want to do an Instagram model. Yeah. They want to do TikTok. Yeah. They want to do self-help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all these are not helping anyone and is not helping themselves. And it just make our society become this clown world. Yeah. And actually when President Trump came back, uh, when, when President Trump came in, he actually set things straight. He actually said these things that we, we can't work like this anymore. This is stupid. We have to do it. <laughs> this got to stop. Yeah, he cut through the red tape. He, he He's not a guy about, you know, creating more bureaucracy. He's not mm -hmm. because he's he's a businessman. Do you so think that's he, why the reason a Republican Party is so against him? Because... Republican Party wants well, that there, part of yeah, the party Yeah, you know, I heard somebody say it and I don't know who said it, but when did politics become a problem when they started teaching political science in yes. school why because we weren't serving our country anymore we were making it a business right yes <laughs> so the kids who who a lot of times get into this uh, see it as honestly a, a position of power a position the the shortest line to power and authority and 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 being able to exact uh, deals and and uh, it's really interesting. I won't say what congressional race, but I was speaking to someone who had gotten into the congressional race here in California, and um, and they were running against another Republican. And I'm like, why are you doing that? This this Republican is established in their community, has a wonderful reputation. Why would you run against them? And they're like, oh, well, you know, one day I'll run. And then he... he he starts telling me about somebody else, you know, their son mm -hmm. and their son is involved in local politics. And I was like, oh, it oh, all makes sense, okay. you know, and like they had kind of the same name. They have the same. So he's like, well, if I don't make it, my son will make it. And then he started telling me about how he had taken like the veterans affairs to their original country where they were from to work with the military. And I'm like, oh, OK, so it all makes like I'm. I, I can take a step back and look at the big picture and go, okay, this guy wants to build a military yeah. relationship and possibly have deals between the military and him. Yeah. So I could see it, right? And I'm like, 
he's not doing it for the people. He's doing it because... To enrich himself. Right. And so this is where we have an issue. We need people who are getting into this to know that one, like you said, we have term limits. It's for two years or maybe four if you get involved in the Senate. Um, it's for two years. You go, you serve your country, and then you come back home. You come back to your job or your business or whatever you left behind. Um, and you do your best. You do what is right for the people. You, you're there to represent the people. And so many are not, you yeah. know, they don't, we don't even see them in our district. You know, Adam Schiff, for instance, can't even remember the last time we saw that man in, <laughs> in, in the district as a congressman <laughs> or even running for, you know, now that he's running for Senate. And you know, what kills me is all the problems they made. Now they're going out there campaigning, going, we're going to fix this. And, it, and it's yeah. like, it's your fault. Exactly. Yeah. I see all these Democrats go like, look at our society. Look yeah. at our homelessness. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, aren't you the one that's in charge yeah. this whole time? Well, and now they're running. For instance, I just heard, um, you know, the uh, assembly <clears throat> chair. I think it's assembly. Yeah, Rivas. Uh, mm -hmm. They're they're trying to put together a whole new package of retail cereal shoplifters. So not just once, but you have to be a serial shoplifter, which means you do it time and time and time and time again. Then they want to be able to prosecute you. And I'm like, well, if you would just have included the laws that we had and <laughs> prosecuted them when we had the chance, you wouldn't have this problem, you know? But yeah. it's like they put laws in effect so we can't prosecute them. The whole reason that people are doing this is because um, that law went into effect um, couple years ago in 2017 yeah, yeah that you know you could steal anything under 900 dollars, and so of course now they're like well hmm i guess that didn't work and so, <laughs> you know and the thing is every piece of legislation costs money yeah you know this is another thing people don't think about you know they're they we just bring all this legislation to the table but each one costs like about thirty thousand dollars every time we p bring a piece of legislation mm. um to be considered, it's $30,000 because it has to go through, you know, the various committees and, wow. and analysis. Yeah. So, Is that so? Yeah. Bills I are expensive. Didn't know that. Yeah. And last year in 2023, we had the most bills ever drafted. Yeah. Like over 3,500, I think was the number. Wow. Talk about like uh, laws and bills. Arizona just found a law that stopped yeah. abortion altogether. Yeah, and Carrie Lake like came out and uh, say no to it. And President Trump actually say like, oh, no, we, sh we shouldn't yeah. do that. Uh, Arizona need to change. What they're saying is like, oh, this bill, th this is a 160 years old law. Mm. That's why it's <laughs> yeah. bad. Right. It's like, no, <laughs> it's not. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> the law of the Bible is like, what, 4,000 years old law. Here, here's what I think um, that people should understand that life, it's the most important thing that we have to chase and preserve, uh, whether it's preborn or at the end of our life, life is precious and we do not have the authority to take it away. And so in a situation like that, you cannot be, play God and say, I'm going to take this life for that life. You know, a lot of times people want to make the argument of the of saving the mother. Mm -hmm. I don't know a mom on this earth that would save say, herself. Yes. Save her. Child. Yes. And, and that's just instinctual to us. So in a situation like that, I would say, do whatever you have to do to try to save both of them, but you have to try to save them. Right. And, and we leave the rest in God's hands. I yeah. don't know what the outcome is going to be, but neither do they, right? It's it, God can do incredible things. And I totally believe that. We've had situations where, uh, you know, there was a mom who talked about um, a botched abortion uh, where the placenta had been um, compromised. Okay. And so it, it wasn't, I don't know how the baby was fed, but the baby was born. Okay. And uh, what she did, and this was back in the day, they had told her, well, she was just going to have to lose the baby. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but she didn't believe them. She, she, she thought there's got to be something. And so she read up about how she could, you know, 
have more blood come to the placenta and she put herself on bed rest Mm -hmm. and that's what she did for the extent of her pregnancy after this situation uh to make sure that her baby was going to be okay and her baby was okay you know had a full term and the doctors were recommending that she would have an abortion because she wouldn't have a healthy baby but you just never know right we just never know uh what god is capable of and our responsibility is to chase after life yes. right like that's the whole premise of medicine so how how did we get it so wrong i don't know um you know it, it we really took out of the equation um that sense of biblical citizenship and and god really that's yeah. what it comes down to because we should be helping, not hurting. Yeah, uh, I, I want to end with this. Um, for those who are flip-flopping with uh, pro-life or pro-choice, they think you guys, if you guys think that we need to compromise with pro-choice mm-hmm. in order to get elected, mm-hmm. that is not what you want. No. And from what we said today, saving a baby is the most a uh, noble thing we can do as human being. Mm. It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with our money, our society. Like the the issue we mm. talk about for the past two episodes, homelessness, it could benefit me. Uh, economic, it can benefit me. Religions, it could benefit me. Mm-hmm. Only a life of baby. Mm. It has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. All we want to do is to save babies' life mm-hmm. because they are image of God. So for those who are pro-life, 100% mm-hmm. pro-life, I encourage you, stand up and stand firm. Mm-hmm. Don't compromise yeah. because that is the most noble thing you can do. That is the most highest honor. That is the most highest, uh, right, most righteousness thing you can do. Absolutely. It, it doesn't benefit any us, any of us but it benefit is save a life and it benefit a baby. Mm-hmm. And that is, yeah. and it, and you know, I'll, I'll add to that. I agree with you a hundred percent. And it's not just the baby. Yes. It, it definitely is the baby, but it's not just the baby. It's the entire life of that baby Yes, from preborn all the way to natural death. Why do we say this? Because we love life, mm-hmm. N- not just, you know, the born life, but the pre life, the end of life. We love life. God God is the only one who can determine when our life begins and when it ends. And when we be, start to play God, right, try to do that, then we're stepping out of the role that God calls us to because our perception is in the wrong place. What do I mean by that? Our vision is in the wrong place. Our vision has to be on the victory, mm-hmm. right? Yes, no matter what people do to us, no matter what the circumstances, we're always doing good and we leave the rest to God. If we are focused on the calling that he has for a life and do no harm, protect and do no harm, then we will be doing what God asked of us, right? God God told us what, right? The greatest commandment is love. Mm-hmm. We need to love. And, that, and, and we are a highly developed world, highly mm-hmm. developed nation. How is it possible that the only thing that we can do when confronted with new life is something so barbaric as to say it doesn't have the value because it's inconvenient to my life? Um, and that's the truth of where we've come. As, and, and if you don't think that there are consequences for all of that, all you got to do is look around us, right? I mean, California is such a perfect example of what happens when you forget how valuable life is, right? And living in God's will, because that's what we're talking about, living in alignment with God's will. And when we don't, you have total, I mean, look where we're at. I mean, you can see total debauchery everywhere. Yeah. And we have laws on the books. You know, we were talking about laws where it's okay for an adult to have sex with a child mm-hmm. as long as it's not more Within than 10 you know, years. Yeah. yeah. That's it's crazy. Insane. It's insane. <laughs> I mean, what we just went with Shan- last week, or wait, what day is today? You know, last week with uh-huh. Shannon Grove, right? Yeah. A perfectly good bill. And they gutted it. I mean, they with the amendments that they proposed that, oh, don't include a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old because they have the right mind to consensual sex. Like, no, no. Th- 
prostitution should never be the answer for a child because a 16 year old and a 17 year old are still a child it's insane and to say and to and to argue that we should give them the opportunity to do that so that they can have a home like what you're telling me we can't do anything better for a 16 year old is to throw them in the street and let them sell themselves you know and they're not even selling themselves they're slaves they're slaves they're sex slaves because they're they're locked in a room with no option to leave yeah Yeah, that's crazy well thank you for coming it's my pleasure very insightful yeah Yeah. uh how, how can we do to help with your campaign Oh, well, so I'm on all social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And my handle is MDM for AD 41, MDM for AD 41. And those are the numbers four and four one. Um, but yeah, I'm just so thankful. I'm thank you, thankful for this platform. I'm thankful to bring truth because I think this is eternal truth. It doesn't <laughs> matter what we're living, uh, but God's truth is eternal. And it's good for all of us. Yeah, thank you. Can you tell us uh, which district you're representing yeah. again? Michelle del Rosario Martinez in Assembly District 41, State Assembly. Right. Well, thank you, Michelle, for coming. Thank you. And now uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, need, need a hug. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>